right, Kyle, we are back with UFC Vegas 32. Uh, Corey Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw is the main event. And then you were telling me just a minute ago that the Chris Dawkins versus Shamil uh, Abdul Rachmanov, uh, or Rock, Rock, Rocky Moff, fuck, I can't read, uh, is postponed a week due to Shamil's, somebody in his team testing positive for COVID. Correct. Yep. Pushing it back one week because yep. at this point they don't, COVID's yep. not a thing, so. Right. One week. <laughs> one week exactly. off. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but still a great card. It's way better than last week. Um, yeah, last last week, week's card was brutal. It was, but we killed it betting. So yes. those are those are the cards we thrive on. Oh yeah, we absolutely killed it. Uh, hit on. We we're one and one in parlays, and we were three and one overall uh, with straight bets. Yep. Um, so four and two total. Um, How many? It was quite a few. It was like eight units. Eight point one like five that. units. Eight, we won. Eight point one. That's nice. Yeah, and. One thing we killed it with, which we haven't been doing, and I, we have to keep doing it, is the over-unders. Um, I'm going to start incorporating those more into um, our betting profile because, especially on a card like that where I didn't see too much value in picking opponents right. straight up, um, there was a lot of value in the over-unders, and we did really well with them. So we're going to keep, keep up with that, which, of course, they're not out on DraftKings yet for this week. Course, <laughs> but I'll be uh, updating everybody with those as always. Yes, um, and this is an early one too, right? Starts at five. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize that, but yeah, it's another apex. It's gonna be in the apex. There's a lot of fights on it, so that's probably why it starts at five. There's a ton of fights, true, uh, even with that the loss, be. even with the loss of Dawkins. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, Starts off with kind of a, a shitty, shittier fight. Diana Belbita versus Hannah Goldie. Uh, Belbita's plus 100, 7,900 on DraftKings, and Goldie is minus 124, 8,300 on DraftKings. And I think they might have got the line wrong. Um, I like Belbita as well. Goldie, if you remember, she came in as a boxer. Yeah. Um, she's thick, she's kind of big. Um, but she only boxes. Right. Um, she didn't start training full time until recently, and even then, she still has to keep an OnlyFans to be able to make enough money. So Hannah uh, OnlyFans Goldie. She lost her last fight to Miranda Granger, um, and Bobita. She came in as a big prospect, and they put her against Molly Meatball McCann in her first fight, and they fought a fucking war that Bobita lost. Right. Um, she got caught women's MMA. She got caught right. of uh, subbed by Jojua in her last one. But I think even though she's coming off two losses, I like Belbita to win this fight. Um, you yeah, saying, I do as well. She is super long, uh, seven inch reach advantage over <laughs> over Goldie. I like that. That's a, that's that's a good stat too. That's huge. Oh yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, Goldie Goldie's five four one twenty five. I mean, she looks pretty stocky. She is, but uh, but she doesn't use it to get takedowns. So right, there's no right. advantage to it. Right, exactly. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna lock in Belbita for for that first fight. Absolutely, and a, an absolute steal on DraftKings at only seventy nine hundred. Yeah. Next up, we got Ciara Eubanks, uh, who we've won some money on in the past. Yeah. Uh, versus Elise Reed, it'll be her first fight in the UFC. She's taking it on short notice. Right. Um, she's only four zero total in MMA. She was in the military prior. Uh -huh. um, she just had some finishes, but Eubanks, I think, is going to be too much. She had Eubanks has fought the who's who in the UFC. Right. Um, she did lose her last two, but they were close. She only loses close fights. Eubanks is someone who we've won money on because she's been underrated. Uh, yeah. Basically, her whole career. She's minus 305 and 9,300 on DraftKings, the most expensive, just because Elise Reed is so inexperienced. Right. Um, I think there's some value in Eubanks on putting her in some parlays at minus 305. Right. Right. I absolutely think she dominates Elise Reed here in her first fight. <laughs> Sorry, Elise. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Next up uh, is a good one. Julio Arce versus Andre Yule. Arce is uh, minus 200, 9100 on DraftKings, and Andre Yule is plus 155 and 7100 on DraftKings. Uh, what do you think about this one, Scotty? Uh, gotta, gotta go back to back with favorites on this one, like RJ. Uh, a little bit smaller, and he is does have a five, gives up five inches on the reach. Yule is did. long. Yule is very long, and uh, lost to a decent opponent in uh, Dawadu. Very his yeah, last very fight. good. He's really good. Before that, uh, beat. Erosa by KO and uh, beat Dan Ige as well. He does have a, a win over ago. Dan Ige, yep. It's crazy. Um, I'm with you. Arche is the side. I won't be betting it just yeah. because Andre Yule, he has been underrated in, in his career. And um, his he lost his last to Chris Gutierrez, but he shows improvement every fight. He's real long. And the only thing I noticed is if he's only plus 155, but on DraftKings he's 7100 versus 9100. It's kind of a huge gap. Mm, that is huge. It's a big gap. Um, so maybe some misprice on DraftKings. I don't yeah. know. Honestly, this fight is probably a stay away from me on DraftKings because I don't think it scores high either side. Um, right. This is one of those fights where I would take the over. Um we we might end up depending on what that line is. We, that that's the play is the over in this. This is going decision. Right. It'll probably honestly be two and a half. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's still worth it. Yeah. Hopefully we get uh, like minus one ten on that or something. Yeah. Um, next fight is possibly the best one on the card with Adrian Yanaz versus Randy Costa. Yanez mm-hmm. is uh, minus 215, 9,000 on DraftKings. Cost is plus 165 and 7,200. Um, this is going to be a banger. Absolutely. Yeah. This is. Absolutely. If this is two and a half, this is going under. Um, Yanez is a freaking monster. He's like. He, he's looked. Like one of the best prospects to be in the UFC right now. He's two and zero with two knockouts. He's basically a boxer. Uh, he doesn't really yeah. mix in the kicks that much. Uh, he's willing to brawl, but he's very technical. He does not throw looping punches. Uh, whereas Costa is kind of the opposite. He's a brawler with heavy power, throws a bunch of kicks, uh, but he does tend to get sometimes a little over aggressive. Um, these two have had like a fun back and forth on Twitter. Arguing, right. did you see it? Arguing, yeah. uh, what's better, Reese's peanut butter cups or Dr. Pepper? <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups, obviously. Yeah, that's Costa. If it if it was if it was Diet Dr. Pepper, it would be close. <laughs> Diet's better. Diet's better. Diet Dr. Pepper <laughs> is better than regular Dr. Pepper. And uh, train Randy Costa also trains uh, out of Joe Lozon's gym. I like and that. one thing we learned from a couple weeks ago is Central Mass guys are fucking tough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it dyes hair green. Yes. Um, but I do like Yanez to win this fight. I think the straight punches beat the more the bloopers. bloopers of Costa. Um, and Yanez, if he gets this knockout, sky's the limit. He's he's going to get a, a top ten guy. He, yeah. He's a beast, man. Absolutely. Um, but to bet it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about yeah, that. That's tough. Uh, Imavov, Nazardin Imavov versus Ian Heinish. Imavov is plus 120, 7,700 on DraftKings. Uh, that's one thing about that last fight. Inez and Costa, you need one on DraftKings. You're going to need one of them. Yeah. Um, Ian Heinish that's... is minus 152 and 8,500 on DraftKings. What do you think about this, Scott? I like Heinish. Jeez, I like all the freaking favorites this week. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, this one is, I think Ian Heinish is getting disrespect. There's no respect. No respect. <laughs> Got no respect. But Heinish, minus 152 against Imanov. I mean, if you look at Heinish's last fights, um, I know he lost to Gaslam in his last one, but Gaslam's a beast. Yes. Um, 
His other losses are to Akhmedov, who, if you can't out-wrestle the guy, he's going to beat you. And right. Derek Brunson, who, same thing. If you can't out-wrestle him, he's going to beat you. Yep. Uh, Imanov, Im- Imavov does not have wrestling. Has, like, the opposite of wrestling. He sucks at it. Um, <laughs> that is the opposite of being good at wrestling, yes. He went to decision with Jordan Williams, and they lost to Phil Hawes in a sloppy fight. I think that Highness wins this. Easy. Yeah. I will miss and, it. And uh, he, he KO'd Gerald Mearshart in mm-hmm. the first round, and honestly, who hasn't at this point? <laughs> Although Jared Learshart did look very good in his last fight. Yeah, I mean, he's okay. He's, he's like a stepping stone. Like, if you could beat him, you're decent. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. I think Amavov, yeah, I think he'll lose this, and I think he'll get the boot from the UFC. Yeah. I have uh, I have Heinish in, in my DraftKings as well. This next fight, yeah. I need to hear your uh, take on it because I have been back and forth. And it's probably, this is probably the best fight on the card. Yeah. P- Puna Hele Soriano versus Brendan Allen. Uh, Soriano is minus 115, 8,200 on DraftKings. Brendan Allen is minus 110, 8,000 on DraftKings. Um, what do you think here? All right. Uh, so, Allen's got some really good wins uh, against. We made, we made a lot of money on that Carl Roberson win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like Soriano. He's got such heavy hands. Yeah. Watching that Minus fight against Dusto, I remember yeah. we, we were back and forth on that one. I think we ended up taking Soriano, but yeah. he fucked Dusko up yes. bad. Yeah. And now, <laughs> now that you're reminding me of that, uh, that was that was real bad. The only thing is Brandon Allen's only loss is to Sean Strickland who has proved he is absolutely elite. Yeah. He has wins over Carl Roberson, Carl Roberson another guy with heavy hands, yeah. Kyle Dawkins, which was a war, yeah. Tom Breeze, another guy with heavy hands, and Kevin Holland, obviously heavy hands. Yeah. So Brendan Allen has fought and, guys like Soriano before. And he's, he submitted Kevin Holland, which is hilarious because Kevin Holland cannot wrestle. <laughs> right. He's got absolutely no ground game. Um, this fight, I'm with you. I was leaning Soriano all week. But if it gets to the second round, is Soriano gas? He's never been to the second round of the UFC. True. I, I just don't know. I, I What I do know is you need one of them on DraftKings. Like we said before with the other, uh, Yanez fight. Mm-hmm. This fight, you absolutely need one of them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's and and I think the the under is probably the play here. Yes, yeah, I agree. Uh, even if it's one and a half, because if it goes to the second round, I'm guessing Soriano is going to be really gassed, and Brendan Allen will get that quick finish, probably by sub. Yeah, probably by sub. Speaking of submissions, perfect transition. Mickey yes. Gall versus Jordan Williams. Uh, Mickey Gall's plus 155, 7,500 on DraftKings, and Jordan Williams is minus 200, 8,700 on DraftKings. Um, this is an interesting fight. Mickey Gall came into the UFC. They handpicked him to fight Sage Northcutt. Um, he was only 1-0 and at the time. He got in yeah. the UFC. But I tell you what, the UFC hasn't given up on him. He lost to Mike Perry in his last fight, but... He didn't look all that bad in round one. Right. Mike Perry just ended up being the much more stronger fighter. And hopefully Gall has addressed that. But it shouldn't come into play against Jordan Williams, who is a smaller uh, fighter in the welterweight division. And that's because he can't cut weight. Jordan Williams has diabetes and cannot cut weight. Well, you got to... You can't pick a guy with diabetes. <laughs> so, yeah, I like the dog here, Mickey Gall. Um, he's a submission guy. I like him yeah. by submission here. Uh, he showed improvements. He's been working with Matt Brown, actually. Matt Immortal Brown. Yes. Um, so, I like Mickey Gall. He showed improvements every fight. A guy that's one no in the UFC, obviously, he's going to look green for a few fights. And he sure did. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, can't pick a guy who can't cut weight and has diabetes. I mean, I'm sorry, Jordan Williams. 
Yeah, I'm sure he's a very nice guy, but <laughs> if, if you need, like, a banana in between rounds to keep yourself from passing out... Right. It's like, um, it. what's his name with the puffer? The puffer incident. Um, yeah. Greg yeah. Hardy. Greg Hardy and the puffer. Yeah. Um, it's fucking, it's fucking <laughs> Scott Malkinson <laughs> get diabetes. <laughs> Oh, next fight's our girl, Miranda Maverick, uh, yeah. versus Macy Barber. Maverick is minus 165, 8,400 on DraftKings, and Barber is plus 125, 7,800. Uh, what are your thoughts on this fight? Like the, like the Maverick here, uh, she is an absolute beast. Uh, did she fight? She fought someone else after UFC 260, right? Or was that her last fight? Her last fight was 260 against Jillian Robertson. Yes. Yep. And, and before that was Jojua. Jojua was at UFC 260. Oh, okay. I got it mixed up. Yeah, that was the Khabib fight. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's she's looked really fucking good in all of her fights. Oh yeah, she's strong. She's a strong girl. Getting her doctorate at the same time. Over yep. here, Norfolk General. At Old Dominion. Yep. Great gal. Um, and Macy Barber. She, this is going to be a tough fight for, for the Maverick, though. I don't know about that. I think she might start her. Macy Barber, know who she reminds me of? Is um, Ronda Rousey. She reminds me of Ronda Rousey because she came in the UFC with tons of hype. Her dad was her main trainer, didn't really have a good training camp. Mm-hmm. Same as Ronda. Mm-hmm. She's just lost her last two, Barber has. One of them was to Roxanne Monaferi. Yes. Uh, and she realized she had to switch camps. She goes to Team Alpha Male, and that's where she's been training. But I think the Maverick is going to be – Macy Barber wins fights because she's stronger than people. And Miranda she's Maverick – She's not going to be stronger than Mar- Mar- no. Miranda Maverick. No. Miranda Maverick is very strong. Um, so I love the Maverick. I think there's a lot of value on her for DraftKings and Absolutely. Uh, and the betting line at minus 165. Um, tons of value there. Yeah. And they both have uh, mutual wins over Robertson. Yeah. I'm showing. Yep. Because how does Jillian Robertson lose if she if she gets overpowered? That's how she loses. <laughs> and both girls are strong, so uh, they're both gonna yeah both bad matchups for Jillian. Actually, we were both right on her last fight. So UFC 254 was Khabib versus Gage. Oh, okay. And UFC 260 was uh, Miocic versus Ngannou too. Gotcha. So we're both right. <laughs> um, Darren Elkins, plus 130, 7,600 on DraftKings, is fighting Derek Miner at minus 165, 8,600 on DraftKings. Um, this is an interesting one um, because Elkins looked pretty good in his last fight with that sub of uh, Garagori. But before yeah. that, he lost four in a row. But. They were against Volkanovski, Ricardo Lamas, uh, right. Paul, and Landworth. Um, yeah, I was I was leaning uh, Elkins. The only thing that has me on minor is his career resurgence with James Krause. The James Krause effect. We've been riding it. That's true. Uh, and how good he looked against Charles Rosa and TJ Laramie. Um, minor, he used to, before he met James Krause, would just go out there and swing bombs and try to power bomb you through the fucking cage. Everything right. he did had maximum power. Um, Kraus has been able to kind of reel that. Tame the beast. Yeah. And since that, he's looked really fucking good. Mm. Um, Elkins is, for how good he's been, even his wins, he's been a punching bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. He kind of Homer Simpsons people a little bit. Right. And I think a guy like Miner might get the win here. And I want to see the prop for Derek Miner round one. Because um, I think there's a chance that Elkins might be done. Even though he's coming off a win. I think he's he's over the hill a little bit. We'll see. Next, we will certainly see. Next one's wild because Kyler Phillips is just wild. Uh, yep. Kyler Phillips minus 265, 9200 versus William Piva plus 207,000 on DraftKings. Thoughts? Phillips. 
I agree. That's it. That's it. Yep. Those are my thoughts. He's three and zero. He's looked really good. Uh, yes. He's a wild man. Uh, if you look at his Instagram, he posts like training videos all the time. Him doing like flips and like fucking crazy shit. Yes. Uh, whereas Julian Paiva, the only positive I see with Paiva here is he's moving up in weight for this fight, first time ever, <laughs> and he's doing it the good way. <laughs> he didn't lose fights that forced him to move up. He's coming off two wins. Right. Um, his last one was over Zuma Gulov, which I, I thought he lost. I thought Zuma Gulov won that. Yeah. Um, but I think he realized... Zuma Gulov is beast. You know what? I think he realized that he's, <laughs> he's too skinny to fight guys like right. Zuma Gulov. So he needed to put on some muscle and move up because he couldn't make... Right. If he put on muscle, he was so big, he couldn't make the weight anymore. So he moved up. Right. Um, it might be the correct move, but I think he's getting too much to handle for his first fight up a weight class, and Kyle Phillips is going to dominate this fight. Absolutely. Next up, Absolutely. Aspen Ladd, minus 200, 8,900 on DraftKings versus Macy Chason, plus 155, 7,300 on DraftKings. Um, this is kind of a... It reminds me a lot of the Maverick uh, Barber fight in that Macy Chason... The way she wins is by being the bigger, stronger person, and she's mm -hmm. not going to be stronger than Aspen Ladd. Right. Aspen Ladd is an absolute tank. Yeah. And her one loss, she got caught by Duran and me. She got knocked out. But yep. Macy Chazon does not have that stinging power to knock somebody out. Not with one punch. Yeah. And her last fight was, I mean, this was in end of 2019. She fucking knocked out Kunitskaya. Yeah. Who did not look good in her last fight, but right. that's okay. I think that's Aspen right. Ladd wins this. Uh, um, maybe by finish. She might finish this fight. She wins a lot of fights by KO. TKO. She does. And that brings that us... Be a, that could be a good little prop bet. It, yeah, I like it too. To get her to get her to probably plus money. Yeah. Main event. Sanhagen versus Dillashaw. Sanhagen minus 190, 8,800 on DraftKings versus TJ Dillashaw at plus 155, 7,400. Um, I don't know much about EPO, um, but I so I I do know a fair bit about yeah, EPO. Yeah, so I was hoping you would be able to shed some light. Yeah, so EPO uh, is a compound that. Uh, Causes you to create more uh, red blood cells. Okay. Right? And so you could do that uh, by training at altitude. In uh, a lot of Olympians will train at the uh, USOC uh, Olympic Center in Colorado, or you could sleep in a hypobaric chamber, right? So low pressure, um, or you could just fucking take EPO. <laughs> If you don't, if you don't have the money for that, so basically, it, what it helps it in recovery mainly. It helps, um, yeah, it helps carry more oxygen to your to your blood or to your muscles, right? So you have more red blood. You cells. could work so out oxygen carrying capacity, so you have better stamina. Better stamina and right, so it's it's huge in the Tour de France, right? They fucking love EPO. Before that, though, EPO is like way safer than what they were doing before, which was blood doping, uh, where they would just put more blood in their fucking body <laughs> and dudes were dudes were just getting blood clots in their sleep oh. because they, they had just just like eight quarts of or eight liters of blood instead of five and uh and then you know their their resting heart rates are all in like the 40s right so they would just they would just get blood clots dudes and for they were still doing this after they knew that people were dying from it so do just have their trainers like wake them up periodically when they were sleeping, so they wouldn't fucking get blood clots. <laughs> um, so yeah, so well, yeah, EPO is uh, definitely a performance enhancer, right? And Dillashaw has not fought since getting popped for EPO, coming so off that loss. A hyperbaric chamber, right? Or, so he's he's coming off that loss, yeah. knockout loss to Cejudo, but he probably. He probably was on EPO for his whole career. Um, coming off that, it, do you think that'll be a big deal? Um, 
Well, he could gas more easily in his five round fight. He still looks jacked. Um, I saw pictures of him. Yeah, it's it's not EPO is not like an androgen. Where okay. It's, it's not gonna like jack your testosterone enough. Gotcha. So it's not gonna make you stronger. So he was just jacked because yeah. before. Yeah. But he could have been on like testosterone too, but he didn't get popped for it. No, the EPO is what it got what he got popped for. Um, yeah. Sanhagen has looked great. Fucking that knockout against Frankie Edgar will be a highlight forever. That knee. Yes. But Dillashaw at plus money, I think, is disrespectful. Uh, yeah. Because before that, he beat Cody twice, beat Lineker, beat a Sunsau, and Sanhagen also beat Lineker in a Sunsau. Yeah. Um, but this this could be a good fight to. Buy Dillashaw low and sell Sanhagen high. Agreed. I totally agree because when Sanhagen fought Al Jermaine Sterling, he did not look good. And that was his biggest step up. I know Frankie Edgar is a legend, but, he, you know, he was old. Right. And Marlon Marais, he's pretty good, but he, he really just has a knockout. With Dillashaw here, Dillashaw is a complete fighter. Um, and what I noticed with Sanhagen is... He tries to get out on you real fast and mm -hmm. outpace you. That's like his main game. Throw more punches than you. He doesn't even care if he lands. His his like land percentage is not very good. Mm -hmm. But he tries to outpace you. With Dillashaw, I know he was on EPO, but nobody's been able to outpace him. He freaking is lightning out there. Yeah. And he, like you were saying, with EPO, it's not has nothing to do with like the explosion, right? Right, exactly. And he's a very explosive fighter, TJ Dillashaw is. Um, yeah. So he shouldn't lose any of that, which I think he will be the mo more faster guy, more power, yeah. um, and I think Sanhagen might get caught and finished here. And Dilla I, I hate Dillashaw. And this is a, a switch for me because old me would take Sanhagen no matter what because I'm rooting for him. Right. But now that we've gotten better at this, <laughs> You gotta go Dillashaw. The value's there. 155, yes. 74 on DraftKings. I might have him in 100% of my DraftKings. I know it sounds silly, but that's the way you would take. Mind, yeah. That's the way you that's, take down those tournaments. tournaments. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's that's my thoughts there. Um, yeah. Like I said, the the props aren't out and everything, so I'll have all our official bets out later. But DraftKings is out, and you said you mm -hmm. were able to make a lineup. Yes, I did. Uh, most expensive guy I have is Kyler. Here, let me sort this by. All right, so we got uh, Phillips at 9,200, and then I did end up taking Derek Miner at 86. Uh, I took eight, uh, Ian Heinish at 85, Miranda Maverick at 84, uh, Bel Belbita at. 79, and then I also had TJ Dillashaw at 7,400. I like it. Yeah. Um, my team that I made, uh, and I'm leaving $900 on the table, try to take this thing down. I'm starting it off with Adrian Yanez, uh, then going with um, Derek Miner, mm -hmm. going with Soriano, Maverick, and then Mickey Gall and TJ Dillashaw. I like that. That's a great tournament lineup. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I made a couple more. I, basically, I'm I'm gonna go real heavy on Derek Miner, um, T.J. Dillashaw, and Miranda Maverick. They they might be in all my lineups, honestly. And yeah, then I don't see either any of those guys losing. Mess around with the rest. Yeah. I, I, you have to like that lineup I just said. You could do that same exact lineup and switch one thing, and it'd be Brendan Allen for Soriano, and just make sure you cover your bases on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to mix in Belbita in some of these, so I'll be messing around with, with these all week. Because yeah. Belbita, there's value in her, too. Absolutely. At 7900 she's basically even money. Yeah. But, like I said, I'll put those uh, bets up later in the week. Yep. All right. All right, bud. Talk to you later. Brendan uh, interview coming out soon. Yep.